Dear students, welcome back to the formal modeling chapter. Today we are going to introduce the second useful form model, the bridging form model. According to our classification tree, bridging form model is under the gate level form model, which is a very useful form model, only second to the popular stack form model. So what is the definition of a bridging fault? A bridging fault means two or even more distinct logic signals which are unintended, shorted together, and uh, create wire logic. From this picture of real defect, we can see potential cause for bridging fault. For example, a particle falling between two wires or a particle falling on more than two wires. And this figure we shows a CMP bridging fault, where CMP stands for chemical mechanical polishing. In the semiconductor IC process, we have a piece of metal And then we remove the upper part of this metal to create three different wires. If the CMP was done correctly, these three wires are supposed to be different signals. However, if the CMP is not done correctly, we may have some residual metal that create bridging fault. So, how many two-way bridging fault are there in a circuit of N signals? If we arbitrarily choose two signals, the total number will be in a combinatorial two out of N, which is O N square number of fault. This is way too many fault. So, we need a physical tool to identify pairs of neighbor signals which are likely to be shorted together from the physical layout information. This is what we call fault extraction. In summary, bridging fault is a very practical and realistic fault model. We can see real defect from the picture. However, the number of fault is O n squared if we don't have any physical information. So typically, if we want to use the bridging fault model, we need fault extraction from the layout. There are three types of popular bridging fault models for the CMOS technology. The YO model, YN model, AW model. In this picture, suppose that signals A and B have a bridging fault. If we model it as a wire O, we would insert an imaginary wire O logic gate. So the output A plus B plus is the OR operation of the original A and B. For example, suppose that original A and B are 0 and 1. After the wire or for model. Signal A would be changed to 1. Similarly, if the original input is 1, 0, then B would be changed to 1. So this is why while or model is also called a one dominant for model. Similarly, we can also model this as a wire end model. In this case, we insert an imaginary wire end logic. So the output A plus B plus would be 0, 0 if the original input is 0, 1 or 0, 0 if the original input is 1, 0. So this is why the YM model is also called a zero dominant form model. Finally, we have a dominant form model, which means the value of B is always controlled by the value of A. 
So these are three popular four models for bridging force. Please know that in this picture, the wire logic is just an imaginary gate. They are not real gate in the circuit. For these three different four models, we will need different test patterns to detect them. Let's consider a AB bridging four. Suppose we model this bridging four as a wire or four model. So we can insert an imaginary wire or gate here. So we can change our circuit in this way. When we apply the pattern 0, 1, 0, the output E would be 1. And this would be 1, this is 1, H is 1, J is 0. So the 40 output would be 0, which is different from the good output. In this way, we can detect the 4 by 0, 1, 0. Similarly, we can also detect the 4 by 0, 1, 1. If we use the wire end form model, we can also detect the 4 by the same test patterns. However, if we use the 8 dominant form model, we can only detect the 4 by 0, 1, 0, but not 0, 1, 1. On this example, we know that Different bridging form model require different test patterns. Now it's time for you to work on a quiz. Consider a bridging form between C and B. Please fill in this table. And uh, the second question is, which test pattern detects the wire or bridging form? Please now pause the video and work on this quiz. Okay, are you ready for the answer? Here are our answer. For the wire or bridging four, because this is exactly the same as the G1 gate, so the 40 output is actually the same as the full free output. So there is actually no test pattern to detect this four. We can call this for an untestable for. That means there is no such pattern to detect this for. The concept of untestable for will be introduced again in the future lecture. Consider the wire end for when B and C are both one. The output is exactly the same as good circuit. We can detect this wire end bridging four using two patterns. If we consider the B dominant bridging four, then when B is zero, we can detect this four. Did you get them all correctly? Now we have a good question. Since we already have single stuck F4 test pattern, so how effective is single stuck F4 test set for bridging 4? This is a very good question. In 1988, Milman has performed experiment on 74 181AOU. They applied several different 100% for coverage single stuck F4 test set. In this table, each column represents a different test set. Totally, there were 8,000 testable bridging faults in the circuit. The experimental results show that there are still many bridging faults not detected by 100% single stuck F4 test set. So, the results show that single stuck F4 test set alone is not good enough to detect all the bridging faults. Some bridging faults are not detected. So what was the reason? Here is one possible explanation. That is feedback bridging fault. A feedback bridging fault can be difficult to be detected 
There are two types of feedback bridging for. One type can create memory. For example, consider the X and the Z feedback bridging for. Suppose we use the Y or for model. Then we can model this circuit in this way. Here is the original input Y. Here is the original input X. And here is the new output Z plus. Suppose we apply input 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. The output are 1, 1, 1. They are the same as the good circuit. However, if we apply 0, 0 to this circuit, then it becomes a feedback latch. So the output of this latch is the same as the last state. If we want to detect this fault, we would need a sequence of two test patterns. For example, we can apply input 0, 1 followed by 0, 0. When we apply 0, 1, the output would be 1. When we apply 0, 0, the good output is 0, and the faulty output is 1. In this way, we can detect the fault. Type 2, feedback bridging fault creates isolation. For example, consider this feedback bridging fault between X and the Z. If we use a wire or four model, we can model this circuit in this way. Suppose we apply 1, 0 and 1, 1 to this circuit, the output would be 1. We can detect the fault. So this is called a hard detection. However, if we apply 0, 0 to this circuit, then it becomes a oscillation feedback ring. The output would be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So we may or may not detect the fault using the pattern 0, 0. We call this a potential detection. The concept of potential detection will be discussed again in our later presentation. Now it's time for you to work on this quiz. Please fill in the truth table with a wire end between X and Z. Question number two, find a test pattern to detect this feedback bridging fault. Now please pause the video and work on this quiz. Okay, here, here are our answers. Suppose we insert a wire end gate into this circuit. If we apply test pattern 0, 1, the output would be 0, which is different from the good output. So we can detect the fault. So the answer is 0, 1. When we apply pattern 1, 0 to this circuit, it becomes a latch. So it would maintain the last state. So we can also apply pattern pair 0, 0 followed by 1, 0. The good output is 1 and the faulty output is 0. This can also detect the fault. So these two answers are both correct. Now let's see which are not considered bridging fault. Number one, bridging fault does not consider short to power or short to ground. Suppose we have a signal that is shorted to power, then we can consider it as a stuck at one fault. Or if it is short to zero, we can consider it as a stuck at zero fault. So they are not considered as bridging fault. Number two, bridging fault does not consider the defect resistance value. Number three, bridging fault does not consider intra cell or intra-gate defects. For example, in this picture, we see a piece of extra gate between the transistor gate and the drain. So this is a transistor level intra-gate defect. Because bridging fault is a gate level four model, so we don't consider this kind of fault. Number four, bridging fault 
does not distinguish between phenyl stem and the phenyl branches. Number five, bridging fold is not a transient fold. The last two items will be discussed in more details in the following two slides. If you remember, in our discussion of single stock F4, we mentioned that single stock F4 on phenyl branch and the phenyl stem are considered as different folds. However, in the case of bridging fold, a bridging fold on phenyl stem and the phenyl branches are considered the same. For example, given this circuit, there are AE bridging fold, AL bridging fold, and AF bridging fold. Consider the wire end fold model. The output will be exactly the same for these three folds. So, for bridging fold, AE bridging fold, AL bridging fold, and the AF bridging fold are considered the same. So, what is the reason? Please think about it in our FFT. Bridging fold is a permanent fold instead of a transient fold. The definition of a permanent fold means that the fold is always present. A permanent fold is caused by defect, such as a particle between two wires. On the contrary, transient folds are not always present. Transient folds can be induced by environmental disturbance, such as electromagnetic interference or internal disturbance, such as IR drop. For example, crosstalk faults caused by coupling effect are transient faults. Consider signal A and E. For permanent bridging fault, the output is always 0, 0, 0, given these three test patterns. However, if it is a transient fault, the output can be 0 or 1. The result is not quite predictable. So in summary, in this video, we have introduced three popular bridging fault models for CMO technology. They are YO, YN, and A dominant fault models. The number of bridging fault is ON squared, which is way too many for large scale circuits. So we need fault extraction tool to identify neighbor signals as a pair. And the single stock cap fault test set is not good enough to detect all the bridging fault. One of the reasons is that feedback bridging fault may cause memory effect or oscillation effect. And the bridging fault model does not distinguish phenyl stem and the phenyl branches. Finally, bridging fault is a permanent fault, not a transient fault. This is FFT for bridging fault. We mentioned that bridging fault does not distinguish phenyl stem from phenyl branches. So AE, AL, and the AF bridging faults are all the same. Do you know the reason? Please think about it. Thank you for watching this video.